Hi, Denise Loca for Donna Downey Studios Artist Gang. This video was inspired by a fortune in a fortune cookie. Look for the dream that keeps coming back. It's your destiny. For this project, I decided to do an image transfer of the text. For this, you have to print out your text backwards on a laser printer. I also planned on using the brushes stencil, but that didn't happen. You'll see. When I was adhering some of the papers, I used a credit card to kind of push the papers down to make them nice and flat. The board I'm using is a mixed media clay board and it was 11 by 14 in size. This is the finished collage board and then I'm just going to add some white fluid acrylic over it just to bring the papers together so they match a little more. I rubbed across it with a credit card kind of adds the white into the textures of the paper. I'm going to use cool colors in the background. If you notice my fancy palette there, the Dixie Plate, I always separate my cool colors and my warm colors. It just helps me out. I decided to add more white in the center because I knew that's where I was going to put the text. But as I was doing that, I kept staring at that printed paper that was underneath and I couldn't get out of my head the fact that it looks like, well, it's sim similar to the um, Flourish stencil. So that's what happened. Here I'm just adding Payne's Gray on top and spraying it with water to make it run down. I used a paper towel to blot it off and then I realized the paper towel had a really nice design on it and I kept using it. paper towel left a nice texture on the page. All paper towels have different designs on them. Sometimes they look good on your artwork. So I'm going to position that stencil in a grouping of threes. So there's grouping of threes all over this uh, piece of artwork. The number three is kind of like a, co a nice cohesive number when you're planning a composition. So there's three flowers in the corner, off on the other side there's three circles, and then there's the flourishes are on there three times. A lot of I don't even realize I'm doing this a lot of times and it just happens, but three is always a good number in your compositions. Sorry that's off camera a little bit, but I'm just putting uh, Payne's Gray on it and then pulling it back with a baby wipe because it was when I took it off the first time it was too stark it was too dark against that background and I just wanted it to have a little bit more of an aged look and more embedded into the background so each time I stencil the flourish stencil I pull it back with a baby wipe kind of reminded me a little bit of aged denim I didn't want to leave the flowers see-through, so I painted the petals in using some red and orange, a little bit of white. Um, always try to put your own hand on the stencils so it feels like yours. Here I'm using a Stabilo pencil to add some shadows, pulling back a little with a baby wipe, adding shadows underneath the flourishes. The, the Stabilo pencil is water soluble, so I can use water to blend it out. I put the uh, flower stencil back on and used Payne's Gray instead of black to give it more definition. Uh, I thought if I used black it was just going to be too harsh. So Payne's Gray matches the overall look, so that's what I used. I'm using my black uniball pen. It worked pretty good. I did some doodling and some drawing over. 
it went right over all those surfaces I have there. So now it's time for the image transfer. I had to cut it apart the way I printed it, and I actually printed this in Photoshop Elements. I created my type and then flipped it horizontally, and I'm just cutting it apart and placing it on the background. You can see through the paper, so you can kind of see where you're putting it. I'm gonna use some blue tape, some blue painter's tape to hinge it, so I can flip it over, put the matte medium on it, and then put it back down. You have to be careful with the blue painter's tape. When I did take it off, I took a little bit of the background off with it and I had to fix it. That nondescript bottle up there is fluid matte medium. It's golden fluid matte medium. I have it in a small travel jar just because it's more manageable than sticking my brush in the big jar. And that way I don't make a giant mess of my brushes when I have to clean them up. This is important, let it dry. I'm impatient, I don't think I let it dry enough. I doodled on the um, background with oil pastel and white gel pen, I let it sit for a while, I went back to it, I should have let it sit longer. It probably would have peeled a lot easier if I let it sit longer. To remove the paper, uh, spritz it with water and you're rubbing the rag of the paper off. You should use a clean hand. My finger's a little dirty there. I did clean it eventually. Um, and then what you're doing is you're rubbing the rag of the paper off and leaving the black down on the canvas. Just be patient. It takes a while. Um, start out gently and then you'll feel the paper start to roll up and then you're on your way. On the bottom there, on the word destiny, I ended up um, getting a little too harsh there and I had to repair some of it. I just used black paint, black acrylic paint, and went back, back in on some of the letters and repaired them. But I like the little worn look it has. It matches the background, it matches the overall piece, so I didn't repair too much. So this isn't the actual plan I had for this artwork, it kind of took on its own destiny. Uh, it doesn't look that bad though. For some spatters, I used a toothbrush um, with some Payne's Gray on it. You put the toothbrush in the paint, run your fingers along the bristles of the toothbrush, and you can get some controlled spatters. Kind of aim it where you want. I did end up using that brushes stencil. You can see it at my blog spot, denisaloka.blogspot.com. There's a little preview. Also, check out my new Etsy store at My Art Adventures. Thanks for watching.